Hi, I'm Keegan and I'm going to give you guys a high-level overview of capital investment decisions. So first off, what will we cover? We're going to first cover what is capital budgeting, what is the investment decision process, and what are the four methods used to make these decisions. So first off, what is capital budgeting? So capital budgeting is pretty much just determining which investment is the most profitable for a company. So the process starts off with, we must first come up with our strategy. What are our long-term goals? Our second phase is the planning process. Within this planning process, we have first identifying what our investments could be, then we must analyze our possible investments. During this analysis stage is when we use the four common measures. So the first two measures are often used as screening tools, primarily because they don't account for the time value of money. So once we've gotten, oh, I rephrase, the two methods that I'm talking about are the payback method and the accounting rate of return method. So once we've gotten past this screening process, we move on to our other two um, measures, and those are net present value and the internal rate of return. Now these two do account for the time value of money. So once we've computed these last two measures, then we actually apply what is called capital rationing. And all this really means is that we choose between our alternative investments and decide which one is the best place for our money. So now let's look further on the actual methods used. So this first method is the payback method. So this method measures the length of time it takes to recover our initial investment. So the advantage of this is that it's quick and easy. The disadvantage is that it focuses primarily on only covering or recovering our initial investment. It doesn't include any future possible cash flows. So it doesn't actually take into account the overall profitability of an investment. Our second one is the accounting rate of return. Now this measures the overall profitability of an investment over the course of the investment's life. The advantage of this is that it is used greatly during uh, short-term decisions. The disadvantage is that it uses an accrual-based income rather than the net cash flows from an investment. This is, out of the four, this is the only one that uses an accrual-based income. So our third measure is the net present value. This measures the net differences between the present value of net cash inflows and our initial investment. Now to, to determine the present value of cash flows, we often use a, I shouldn't say often, we do use a discount rate. This uh, discount rate is often um, referred to as the required rate of return. And all this really means is that if the investment meets or exceeds this return, then the project is deemed acceptable. So the advantage of net present value is that it determines the dollar value of future cash flows and brings it back to present day. The disadvantage is that it's difficult to compute. Our last measure is the internal rate of return. So this is the actual rate of return that we receive with net present value. Net present value was the dollar value, the internal rate of return is the actual rate of return. Um, the advantage of this is that it shows the actual rate of return in terms of the present. The disadvantage is that it's often difficult to compute and time consuming. So, in summary, we've talked about what is capital budgeting, what is the investment process, or investment decision-making process, and what are the four methods that are commonly used to make these investment decisions. Thank you.